So it looks like Diddy's lawyers have been working overtime on his case because they seem to be pretty confident that he will beat the charges considering and walk free. This is kind of shocking considering that he just got denied bail for the third time. But the streets are now saying that this is all a part of his lawyer's master plan to get him off scot-free. According to reports, this is all due to a recent lawsuit filed against Diddy and his former bodyguard, S.A. Allegedly, Diddy and his lawyers are planning to use this as a get out of jail free card to prove that his accusers and the feds are making things up and are on a witch hunt. Girl, y'all need to take a seat for this because it's about to get messy. Okay, so unless you've been under a rock or something for the past year or so, y'all already know that Diddy is in a hot mess with the feds. Until this recent lawsuit, everyone assumed that he was going down hard for the alleged crimes because it seemed like a slam dunk. There have been about 10 lawsuits filed against him since Cassie made the bold move last year and they don't even get me on the federal case. The feds managed to convince a grand jury to indict him and y'all know that the feds never play especially when it comes to major cases like this they have a conviction rate that's over 90 percent so you know that they really do their homework when it comes to cases like this but then things change when a woman named Thalia Graves sued Diddy and one of his former bodyguards Joseph Sherman aka Big Joe for allegedly essaying her years ago in 2001 according to the court documents in or around the summer of 2001 plaintiff's life was knocked off course when defendants Sean Combs and Joseph Sherman viciously essayed her at the Bad Boy Record Studio in New York City. Plaintiff was 25 at the time and dating one of Combs' employees, a relationship that Combs exploited to lure Plaintiff into meeting him and Sherman alone. Once they successfully sequestered Plaintiff, Combs and Sherman gave Plaintiff a drink likely laced with a that eventually caused her briefly to lose consciousness. She awoke to find herself bound and restrained. This seems to follow Diddy's alleged M.O. where he was spike women's drinks, wait for them to pass out, and then allegedly proceed to do nasty things to them. We have heard so many people come out to tell their experiences, and it's just creepy to say the least. The documents went on to say that Combs and Sherman proceeded to brutally S.A. and violate plaintiff. Combs mercilessly S.A.'d her early and Sherman forcefully slammed plaintiff onto a table, slapped her, and repeatedly thrust his into her mouth. Both men were undeterred by plaintiff's cries for help throughout the attack. The plaintiff went on to claim that the incident affected Thalia so bad that she suffered over it for years. And it got worse when Cassie filed her lawsuit, which triggered her and set back her recovery. The document said, plaintiff never recovered from defendant's she has thoughts and ideation and has received extensive psychological treatment because of defendants attack. For decades, she remained silent and did not report the crime out of fear that defendants would use their power to ruin her life as they had repeatedly explicitly threatened to do. To this day, plaintiff suffers from severe depression, anxiety, and panic attacks and still lives in fear of defendant. It continued. Any progress plaintiff had made in healing from the attack over the years was dramatically reversed on or around November 27, 2023 when she learned for the first time that Combs and Sherman had video recorded the horrific incident 22 years before and had shown the video to multiple men seeking to publicly degrade and humiliate both plaintiff and her boyfriend. Plaintiff could not believe that defendants would record themselves committing such a gruesome crime and then proceed proudly and widely to disseminate the recording of it. She was distraught and sunk into a deep depression. She again considered ending her life. It then said, this action seeks redress for defendants brutalizing, misogynistic, and on plaintiff starting in 2001 with their and continuing in the subsequent years as they compounded her humiliation by showing the video of the SA to others. And if you're wondering how Diddy managed to corner Thalia in the first place, she revealed that he had contacted her because he wanted to talk to her about her boyfriend's growth at Bad Boy Records, which he had signed her boyfriend to. The document said, in or around the summer of 2001, plaintiff received a call from Combs concerning her boyfriend's employment at Bad Boy. He told her he wanted to meet with her in person to discuss her boyfriend's supposed performance issues. Her boyfriend was determined to climb up the ladder at Combs' records label, and as his romantic partner, Plaintiff was committed to helping him. Plaintiff agreed to meet with Combs. In retrospect, it was evidently a sick and twisted way of using his ownership of and title at Bad Boy and its affiliate entities to hurt Plaintiff and also show his power and ability to humiliate her boyfriend, his executive. It continued. A few hours later, Combs arrived at Plaintiff's mother's residence in Queens with Sherman, who was employed by Combs as his bodyguard at the time. Sherman was driving an SUV and Combs was 
in the back seat. After plaintiff entered the vehicle, Combs offered her a glass of wine, which she accepted. Combs began discussing his alleged concerns about her boyfriend's performance at work. Meanwhile, as plaintiff drank what had been handed to her, she started to feel lightheaded, dizzy, and physically weak. In retrospect, it was clear that Combs had caused to be put into plaintiff's drink as a few sips of wine had never impacted her that way. She claimed that they then drove her to his studio in Manhattan where the alleged incident happened and they allegedly reported the whole incident. Diddy's other bodyguard, Gene Dill, kind of hinted that there might be some truth there and he said this. She said that, um, do I know this bodyguard named Big Joe? And I said, uh, why, what's going on? And then she told me about that she had heard about this tape floating around of Puffy uh, X, X A and her. And I was like, wow. And I couldn't say anything because I know I know the parties and stuff like that. But I told her, I said, yo, I don't, I don't, I, I can't give you Joe number, but I'll get in touch with him or whatever, best way I could. So, um, I got in touch with Joe and I told him what the lady said. And he just said that she was, she would, you know, she didn't know anything about it. And that, you know, it was felonious. So then the lady had told me she didn't want Joe. She just wanted a copy of the tape so she could bring charges up on Puff. So I said to her, uh, he said that it, no tapes exist. That tape doesn't exist. You understand? So. I gave her that information. I let Joe know, I let her know, and that was basically it. Do you believe the tape exists? What I believe and what I know is two different things. Delia also had a press conference with her lawyers to announce the lawsuit. The internal pain after being sexual has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by and during the assault. It's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. However, Big Joe is calling BS on this, jumping on an interview with Sarah Wallace to clear his name, accusing Thalia of lying, even going as far as to claim that she allegedly offered him money to help her take Diddy down. I'm questioning her claims against me. I wasn't the head of the security. You got the wrong man. I've never seen you. I've never did anything negative with you. I've never been in the same room with you. Not only wasn't I there, I wasn't even in New York. Sherman says he did security for Bad Boy Records in the 90s, but wasn't working for the company in 2001. It's me and Mariah Carey. Sherman provided us with his personal album of photos with celebrity clients he says he's protected over the years. Me and Beyonce. He says he did see Diddy at industry parties after Sherman left the company, but there was no relationship. Big Joe maintains he is being set up by false accusations. Her and whoever that she's in cahoots with was orchestrating a money grab and she wanted me, me to be part of that money grab. It says it right in her text. He then proceeded to show text messages that he got from Thalia, and I'm not gonna lie, the text looked really bad. Sherman showed us texts from an Instagram account starting last November. He says his team has linked to Graves. We confirmed the connection. The first text asked if Sherman was a security guard for Puffy. She confused me because she kept saying, are you Big Joe? I said, you're on my Instagram. When she asked, are you Big Joe, what did that mean to you? That means that she don't know who I am. The text asked him to call the number and goes on to say, if you will be my witness against Diddy, then my attorneys will leave you out of any proceedings because we have statements that you physically showed over eight people, videos of me and you to people in the studio. Sherman responded, I don't know what the expletive you talking about. Know who the expletive you are. He was still named in the lawsuit. It didn't end there. He went on to claim that he had never met Thalia before this and that she was trying to scapegoat him for not helping her in her lawsuit against Diddy, adding that he would be filing a countersuit against her. Was there any video? Not only was there never a video, I never saw the woman. I'm nothing but a scapegoat for this BS. 
because I wouldn't get puffy and lie on Sean Combs. Sherman's legal team says they plan on filing a counterclaim in the near future that will likely include defamation. Combs' attorneys have not yet responded to the lawsuit. I'm not trying to victim blame or anything like that, but there seem to be a lot of holes in failure story. To be fair though, this doesn't mean that she's lying. A crime doesn't have to be perfect or make logical sense for it to be true, especially a messy and horrible crime like S.A. But word on the streets is that Diddy's lawyers are allegedly planning to poke holes in failure story and get it thrown out of court. Rumor has it that they are planning to use the lawsuit to create reasonable doubt around the other cases as well, which could also get them thrown out. It's going to be interesting to watch this play out because one thing that's for sure is that Diddy's lawyers aren't here to play nice. Fans commented, in this crazy case, there will be some lying accusers, some lying witnesses, some crooked cops, etc. But there will also be hundreds of hours of footage of criminal sexual activity, some of which include minors and people forced into work. It's going to be messy and nuts. If the incident happened in 2001, but she wasn't made aware of the footage until 2023 after Cassie's suit, it makes me think that the footage was confirmed by Cassie's legal team, who was able to give it to her for her case. Diddy is going to hell. And the bodyguard is lying. I remember when Diddy's situation first hit the internet, he was so quick to defend him on Instagram and say how they were trying to tear a black man's career and he is innocent and Diddy would never do things like that. Then a video came out and now you're called. But do y'all really believe that Diddy and Big Joe did did bad things to Thalia or is she making things up for money? Drop your thoughts in the comments and then check out this next video.